Virginia High School is giving students a new way to create art in their own language. Choi Wang takes us to South Lakes High School, where this year's new inclusive fine arts class is inspiring others to get out of their comfort zone and create. These students are so talented, and the goal of creating this class was really to make sure that they could accommodate more students with intellectual disabilities and get them into these various art programs. And so whether they're sculpting with clay or painting or using a pencil, you name it, they're able to create something beautiful. Well, welcome, Jocelyn. I'm glad you're here. Whether it's a new student. It is looking really good, Spencer. Or an artist working on her next masterpiece. It looks good. It looks very good. Matt Ravenstall is determined to help everyone create art they're proud of. Now, I'll make suggestions and stuff, but we want you to make the art that matters to you. And in his inclusive fine arts class with both neurotypical and students with disabilities. Well, I really like this. All of them get the chance to do just that. This is a sculpture I just made and I truly paint it. The kids sit together, everybody gets involved in the critiques. But it's a beautiful piece, it really is. Nora, why do you like this project? Yeah, she loves to paint. Claudia Harvey is a special education teacher who assists students with intellectual disabilities. It's easy for us to just give a canvas and just say, oh, here's some paints and paint but we want to make sure that we're letting them tell us what they enjoy doing. Nora is visually impaired, so she's working on tactile art. We would just gloop out like wall spackling and she would m manipulate it all through it. Then came gluing the fabric. Now she's adding color. Did you like the fabric? Yeah, so she really enjoyed doing the fabric. I personally believe and my experience tells me these students can make art just as well as anybody. At another table, Spencer is working with yarn. When I first started teaching him, he would yeah. nod off in his chair and, and sort of, you know, that kind of thing. But then a spark. We realize that if he is doing something more physical, he gets much more excited. We could always wrap around the frame too if he wanted. We make sure that we let him tell us what colors he wants to use. Ravenstall describes this process as students speaking their own language. What do you think? But first, you have to figure out what that language is. Try and get a sense of what the meaning is to them. Of course, there's trial and error. Today I was trying to see if I could get him to carve that stone, but he he, he wants nothing of it. <laughs> That's all right. But when things really click... Frank here is um, a very good painter. You won't need a translator to understand or feel what they're saying. When people see it in, in public, they are very, they're amazed by it. And they can't wait to see what else is created this new school year. Nora, who you saw earlier working with that fabric, well, we talked a little about trial and error, right? And sometimes it's also just trying different things. They'll actually put sand in her paint to allow her to really work with that texture and create something of her own. We've got a slideshow up on WJLA.com where you can see a lot of the different various art pieces these students have already created. Back to you.